Yeah, all girls. Who's is 18, youngest is 12. Oh, Greg's up there. Anything? No one's come forward, but we haven't started canvas yet. Who called it in? My mom. Works graveyard. Anything from her? She's hysterical. You talked to her at all? I was waiting for her to calm down. You keep waiting. Well, have her sedated, you won't get nothing. These two were uh, fixing the shooter. Third one got it in the back. Youngest got it hiding in the bedroom closet. The whole place was ransacked, top to bottom. No one heard anything? Neighbors said the stereo was up loud last night. That's it. Any men live here? Nothing permanent. Why don't you start a campus? Sure. Start looking into boyfriends? That phone don't come in yet? Yeah, I told the lieutenant. John, did we hear from Carol yet or not? The lieutenant's been answering the phone, detective, so I, I don't know. Remember to run the mom through BCA. I'll, uh, I'll check with crime scene about Prince. Well, when you and Greg gunshot victim at Bellevue, phone dump came back. Last call in was 11 p.m. from a Maria Feliciano herself. Well, here's her address. Greg, you and Baldwin wrap this up, otherwise I'm going to need help from the borough. Personal items from the DOA's apartment. I'll go through that. What is this, a broom closet now? Andy, give me a break. Now, boy, keep your crap on your desk. I'm gonna hit the head, then we'll go pick this Maria up. All right, enough of this already. Enough for what? This whole department's been through hell with the World Trade Center attacks, and we're all trying to deal with it in our own way. But just because we're not... ...personal grief, and it's an insult, Andy. You're treating us like we don't care as much as you. We're still hurting, too. Can I piss now? Aren't you guys in enough trouble? Hey. Clark, narcotics. That's Maria Feliciano, right? Yeah, why? What are you bring? It's all yours. He got shot last night. Said he didn't come in right away because of no insurance. Fred Roberts. Thank you. Yep. Oh, man. Why is this turning into a deal? Play a show for the gunshot wound. We gotta look into it. Yeah, well, it's a wasted trip. Because like I've been telling people, this thing came out of nowhere. What's your name? Fred. Roberts. I just want to get this patched up so I can get How'd out of here. How did you get shot? I was walking down East 19th, near Park, near where I live, and I got shot. Didn't see a damn thing. Any idea who'd want to shoot you? None. Nobody. You got any warrants out, Fred, which might explain why you're less than thrilled to see us. Hey, I got a right to get shot and not know anything about it. Well, you're right. You do. Good. And more importantly, we got better things to be doing. Then go, man. I ain't holding Shut you back. Up. Now, listen, get straight with us right now. We go our separate ways. Got it? Yeah. Okay. What's your name? Mike Graff. One F. Got any warrants? One. Possession. My lame-ass attorney gave me the wrong court date. With intent to sell? No, no, no. I, I got pinched trying to buy an eight ball. All right. We'll check that out. And if that's all... That's all. Swear to God, go check. Tonight on TNT. At it. So what's up? The reason we waited till here to tell you was, uh, well... We've got some bad news, and we didn't want to lay it on you in front of your family. Well, what happened? Teresa Conseco was found murdered this morning, along with her three sisters. Oh my God, who did it? We don't know. Uh, that's what we wanted to ask you about. How would I know anything? You were friends, right? Yes, but I can't believe they're dead. Do you know anybody in her life who would do this? No. Boyfriends? Anybody like that? No. When was the last time you talked to her? <laughs> I don't know, a couple of days ago, I guess. 
There was a call into their apartment last night, 11 o'clock, from your cell phone. That's right. I'm sorry, I forgot. I'm just really tripping out right now. Well, what, uh, what'd you talk about? Just saying what's up? But wait a minute. If, if you knew that I called her last night, why did you just ask me? Because we got four people killed. Well, I didn't have anything to do with it. What else did you talk about besides, uh, what's up? You know what? That really pisses me off that you just did that. Maria, relax. You relax. Yours was the last call into the apartment before the murders. So? And now you just lied about making a call. Look, I'm just really freaking out, okay? Okay. So none of her friends that you can think of would be involved in this? No. Any of your friends? No. Any friends of your boyfriend, Tino? <laughs> See, no, I don't like this, okay? I don't like talking to you guys. You don't need to. Just answer the questions. Well, I don't know who did it. Can I leave now? Yeah, yeah, we'll be in touch if there's anything else. <laughs> Who's Tino? It's her dealer boyfriend. I got a tip from narcotics. Go snatch him up. Yeah. And? Let me put it this way. How many Puerto Rican girls do you know when her and their friend got murdered would just sit there saying, oh my God, I can't believe it? Do we like her or not? She's in the loop. Any prints back yet? Nothing. So what now? Uh, Miss Maria's got a dealer boyfriend we're gonna take a shot at. All right, take a radio. I got every white shirt in the city up my ass and I need to be kept up to speed. Uh, John Clark from Narcotics. I said to stop by downstairs when you're done. This guy's all worried about us wearing his damn drug collars. Don't worry, she didn't say nothing about her boyfriend quitting the drug trade and joining the Navy anytime soon. A stool of mine told me that team got ripped off last night for 50 grand out of his apartment. Thought you should know. When did you hear this? This morning. Why didn't you tell me when I was down here earlier? I was gonna, but you walked away. Actually, that was more me being in a slight hurry to find out who killed four girls last night. But if you want to see me, I can probably throw something all together. All right, all right. Okay, well, I'm telling you now, Tino got ripped off last night. You know where to find him? I can give you some place to share. You're showing us. Tell your boss. Hey, hey Eddie, tell the sergeant I gotta take care of something. We got six more arrests to process. All right, then leave three for me until I get back. There's a John Clark works homicide up in the Bronx. Yeah, that's my dad, John Clark Sr. <sighs> Let's go, Junior. Coming, Bill. Who's he? Sipowitz. What was that all about at Bellevue? Ah, uh, some douchebag got shot doing who knows what, but he ain't talking. Yeah, he had a failure to appear, Ralph, but we figured he wants back here. This guy shot in the left shoulder? Yeah. He got red hair, scrawny? Yeah, yeah, why? Well, Connie and Andy are looking into a deal that might have a connection on this quadruple. Tip was, he got ripped off last night out of his apartment on 2nd and B for 50 grand. I ran the address. It was a shots fired 911 call next door. The Dago owner ran out, saw a guy shot in the arm, fit in the description I just told you. The guy booked when the owner went to make the call. We got a cop sitting on this idiot. Mike Graff, call down there, make sure he stays home. Is Mike Graff the cop or the idiot? The idiot. So you're a friend of Yoda's. I got it, Ed. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a friend of Yoda's, man. Where's Tino? Bathroom. What's going on? Yeah, we heard you got ripped off last night. We came by to help, and look what we walked in. Just a little uh, recreational drug use. Wait, thought you got ripped off here? No, I didn't take any of those. All right, come on, let's see if we can find out who ripped you off last night. I'm over that water under the bridge. Oh, uh, you got a big heart, Tino. You gotta look into it. Hey, Doc. Detective? Hey, what's going on? What can I get out of here? How long have you lived in New York, Mike? Since I'm born. Yeah. So, uh, how could you confuse Park Avenue, where you told us you got shot, with 2nd B, where you did get shot? What? A witness at the scene identified you. Okay. What difference does it make? I, I still don't know who shot me. Probably the guy whose apartment you ripped off, don't you think? Okay, now that's outrageous. I didn't rip off nobody. We say you did, and that's all that matters. Look, I, I was walking down the street. Two guys come busting out of a building and start running up second. 
right after them comes this other dude, and he squeezes off around at him. One of the guys running, turns around, and fires back. That's who hit me. If that was the truth, you would have told us that earlier. I didn't tell you because... Because I recognize the guy who shot me by mistake, and I don't want to get involved, which I got a right to do. Now, that that's the truth. You got to believe me. Oh, be cool, all right? Be cool. I don't believe a word you say, you little prick. Okay? Now, there's no more negotiations. You tell us who shot you, or you get charged with armed robbery and that possession card we let you slide on earlier, back when we had a sense of humor. Yeah, you don't have to get involved. Just tell us who did it, and that'll be the end of it. Julian Pisano. That's who shot me. What about the other guys? I don't know them. Word we got on you, Tino, is your thing is a little blow here. Yeah, I party a little bit. So why'd you get so messed up today? You got something weighing on your mind? It's just a little partying. Do you know Teresa Conseco? No. Do you know Maria Feliciano? Heard of her. You heard of your girlfriend? I think I need to lay down. Tough. Why are you lying about things you don't need to lie about, Tino? I'm old-fashioned, you know? Keep the women out of it. What's this? What? These spots on your jacket. I don't know. It's an old jacket. Oh, it doesn't look old. Take it off. Why? All right, all right. That's dry blood. How'd you get blood on your jacket, Tino? We're gonna do tests on this blood, Tino. And we're gonna start by matching against Teresa and her sister's blood from their apartment where they got killed last night. Sit down. Ricky. Who's Ricky? Talk to Ricky. Sit your ass back down. Man. All right, get EMS on the radio. This guy's in trouble. Don't put your fingers in his mouth. You something else to clear it. Call EMS. All right, come on. Good. Now, open up. Open up. Now. They've waited. You don't seem that surprised to see us, Julian. Well, you guys mind readers now? What's up? Where were you last night? All over. What? Julian, you can't go firing off shots in the street. I mean, come on. You know how many people we got saw what happened? The good news is the guy you shot up, you robbed Tino's place, he made it. So we're not boxing you in for a murder here. No, but we got you for everything else. So treat us with some respect, and we'll treat you with respect right back. I got month old twins. That's our problem? They're the reason I agreed to go in on this school in the first place. I got mouths to feed. We don't need to hear this. And what I'm saying is, I can't go back to the joint. I got a family now. So, so, what can I do? You tell us. Well, the, the other guy, I mean, it was his plan. Uh, he brought me in his backup. You got him in, huh? What's his name? He's gonna help me? What's his name? Jimmy Giglio. Okay, 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 what's that do for me now? Hmm? It helps. But does it wash away armed robbery and shooting some guy on the street? We'll get back to you after we find us. Jimmy. Get in the cage, Julian. I know where a body's buried. Whose body? I don't know. Listen. This is big, what I'm telling you. So I gotta know. I need it written down that I get a walk if I give all this up. Nothing's happening verbal or written till you tell us what you got. All right. Okay. About five months ago, a guy I used to run with, he calls me about four in the morning, he tells me to bring my van down and some coke if I got any. Me and him, it was a rolled up rug, right, but obviously there must have been someone in it. We throw it in the truck, we go down to Brooklyn, and we bury it. Give me $500, that's it. Who's this guy you helped? See, now that's the part that's gonna mess me up, okay? Because this guy's connected. What's his name? You need me? Yeah. Who's Ricky? I don't know. Who's Ricky? Ricky. Tino kept saying, talk to Ricky, talk to Ricky, before his eyes rolled back in his head. Yeah, it's Ricky Vargas. It's Tino's club partner. You know where to find him? Yeah, no problem. He gonna live? He'll make him. Listen, go grab this guy. Come on. Andy, you need to hear this. We're working a quadruple there, Meta Boy. What's it about? Danny. Tell him what you told us. He's here to work out my deal. Once you tell him what happened, yeah. All right. 
Like I told these two, this guy I helped out is very connected. Big time, so I want relocation for me and my family if I cooperate. Look, tell them why you're going to piss me off. Right. Uh, about five months ago, a guy named Max Lagazzi hired me to bury a rug, if you know what I mean. And where'd you pick Max and this rug about? Tail feathers. It's a strip club. Body in the rug? No. This, uh, Lagazzi didn't tell you anything who it might be. No, when we were on our way to bury it, he was snoring up the storm. He was screaming, cursing, he's kicking the dashboard. No. And where'd you bury the rug? Yeah, nice try. I'm not giving that up until I get a deal. Where'd you bury the rug? You know what? I'm done talking. Okay, because I gave you a sample, obviously you like the taste, and now it's time for my deal. Okay? End the conversation. Wrong. And the next thing out of your mouth better be where you buried that rug. Are you with the DA's office? I mean, who are you? You get someone in here who can work me out a deal. Good deal is that I don't bust your skull open. Now, where'd you bury the rug? Get your hands off me, I'll get out of here quick! <laughs> That body you buried, there's a good chance that was my partner. Now, I'll leave you dead on this floor if you don't tell me where you buried him. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. Where? Where? It's a vacant lot down on the Brooklyn waterfront. John. Notify the ME's office. I want them down there. Please, I'll take care of this first. Go, I got it. I'll have my radio. All right, listen up. You see, that's bringing the video. Yes, he's bringing the equipment to David. All right, everybody shut up. All right, Andy and I are going to go down to Brooklyn. You know where to find this, Ricky? Yeah, I got some places. Fine, you and Connie, go grab them up. Greg and Baldwin, why don't you go look for this other guy Julian did the robbery with last night? If that turns into a dead end, get in contact with Connie. Everybody, monitor their radios and keep me posted. That's it. Let's go. Ricky, what's up? Nothing, what's up with you? You doing some laundry? Yeah, gotta do it. Ricky, we need your help with an ID. You heard this guy might have worked at one of your clubs. I just wanted to ask you a couple questions. I want a lawyer. Yeah. Oh. What are you running for, Ricky? Man, didn't you hear me? I want a lawyer. Yeah, you'll get your damn lawyer. Yeah. We're going to go see what your partner Tino has to say. Another unit just grabbed him up, found his smoking rock in some apartment. Word is he's nervous and talkative. You're betting your life that Tino's going to keep his mouth shut. You can say what you want, but I ain't saying dick, and I want a lawyer. Well, keep in mind, Ricky, that your half ass legal aid attorney ain't going to be doing your time for you. Neither will you. Hell with him. Alright, you guys still ink people? Look, they had that on computers now. Sit down. Where were you last night, Jimmy? You don't even want to know. Answer the question. 
I got a hold of some bad clamps. Ever had bad clamps? It was like a volcano last night. You know they could have sacrificed the virgin on my ass? You got people saw you on 2nd and Avenue B. Oh, my wish. I'm telling you, I didn't stray three feet from the John all night. So what else? Well, we deal with knuckleheads like you every day. Knuckleheads pulling off knucklehead robberies against other knuckleheads. We get paid to do it, and most days it's not a problem. Today, it's a problem. And we have no patience right now. Because you're taking time away from other things, other people. So this is what's going to happen, Jimmy. First, you better lose that smirk. Second thing, you're either going to tell us about Robin Tino or Dawn. In which case, we talked to you in the system and go with Julian's version. How was you who opened up on the street and shot that pedestrian? He's currently cleaning the right of Belgium, by the way. That's right. Julian flipped on you. Third thing is going to happen now. And there's a lot riding for both of us on your decision, Jimmy. Because if you waste one more second of our time, I'm going to be out of a job and you're going to be out about 18. So think it over. Be very careful before you speak. Go ahead. Look, I shoot nobody. I right, was Julian that shot that guy. How do you know, Tino? I don't. Then how'd you know there was 50 grand stashed in his apartment? This is girl from Maria, right? Met her in a club. They bang her. To keep me interested, she gets to how her limp boyfriend always has a couple of grand stashed in the bedroom. So we work it out. I show up at 10, Maria's gonna answer the door and we push in. But she says not to worry because Tino's soft. He'll give it up, no problem. But on the way out, that crazy prick comes chasing after us on the street, firing his gun. Listen, it was Julian to fire back, right? Not me. Now he can kiss my ass, roll over rat prick. Maria said Tino kept a couple grand around, but there was 50? Yeah, I guess maybe that's what had him run out in the street throwing shots in his underwear. Where's the money now? Because uh, we could vouch it in your name, and uh, you never know, you might get it back. <sighs> it's in my apartment. Like the address. What's your history with this Lagazzi? Started out, I thought we were friends, but he mostly wanted me to score drugs for him. He's made, so it's like meet him or something to get his hands dirty. Are you still talk to him? But no, not like before, you know. I, I bump into him once in a while. Listen, now, um, we're gonna need you to reestablish contact. Hey, what do you mean? I'm gonna wear a wire and get him to talk about that night. No, no. That's not part of the deal. I said I testify. There's no deal yet, Julian. All we got is maybe a dead body, and you're the only one who knows it was here. So you're going to wear that wire to prove you didn't do this murder on your own. I should have never done this, man, because I don't trust you guys at all. You can trust us now. Shut up. And how am I supposed to get him to talk? What, I take him out for ice cream? You're going to call, and you're going to tell this ass that you came into some coke. We will coach you on the rest. And what if he quit using it? Do we need him around here anymore? Give me the car. I should have never done this. I should have never done this. We got something. What you gotta do, I got this. Thanks, partner. Last chance to help yourself out, Ricky. Yeah, like talking to you, gonna do me wonders. Stick him in a cell. Let's go talk to Tino. Any word? They uh, found Danny's body. Okay. Well, uh. 
We got Ricky, but he lawyered up, so now we got to figure out what the next move is. Uh, is Tino out of ICU yet? No. The guy behind the robbery at Tino's place last night, his name is Jimmy Giglio. He was banging Tino's girlfriend, Maria, as she set it up. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll go back at her. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure she's still at her parents, so that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll go talk to her. <clears throat> Keep him company. You get in touch with Agent Boyd yet? He should be here in a minute. He's gonna come here, he's gonna lock us down with a bunch of BS about indictments and protocol and testaments. So what do you want to do, Andy? Go rogue and do it ourselves before anybody notices, huh? I got 15 other people to update. Detective. What? Theo Sitter called. What's going on with Ricky? He lured up. But uh, we got some info to go back at that corner, yeah. You're on top of it? Yeah, we got it. All right, you and Greg, go. Katie, it's me. He was at his sitters. I need you to go get him and uh, have him stay at your place for a couple of days. Katie, look, you got to do this for me. Something came up with, with Danny, and uh, I can't do it right now. Please. Come on. found the body of our guy. Detective Sorts. Yeah. Where? Brooklyn. And we got the guy who drove the van to help bury the body. He got the call from a Max Lagazzi at Tail Feathers. Lagazzi's our guy. You know Max is the son of a copo, right? I don't care who he is. We have a shot right now with this accomplice to make contact and see if we can get Lagazzi to talk. So your guy's ready to cooperate fully? Today he is. Tomorrow, who knows? What are you asking me here? We're gonna have our guy wear a wire against Lagazzi tomorrow at Tail Feathers. We need you to okay it. Well, that's big. You write it up and I'll run it for my superiors. Did I tell you? I'm confident you're capable of signing off on this and reporting to your superiors that you did so because time was of the essence, which it is. The indictments you were waiting on when Sorensen and your agent went missing, the indictments for your superiors that handcuffed us, what'd you end up getting out of those? Not a whole hell of a lot. Lagazzi is the guy who killed Sorensen and most likely killed your agent that you had undercover at that club. That agent was your friend, right? All right. Personnel, surveillance, let me know what you need. Tonight, you recognize it? What, the puke? Yeah, it's Tino's. Bad case of the nerves off what happened last night, I guess. Plus, finding out his girlfriend set him up for a robbery with the guy she was banging behind his back. That's enough to make any guy toss him up. Where's Tino at now? Downstairs, talking to detectives. So is Ricky. And you should know, Maria, they're both pissed off at you, saying things about your involvement last night. And I'm trying to figure out if it's true or if they're just making things up to get back at you. What are they saying? What's Ricky saying? Because if anybody shouldn't be talking about what they did last night, it's Ricky. I see it all the time, Maria. The one person who keeps their mouth shut thinking the others are doing the same, they're the one who gets screwed. What's Ricky saying? I want your version of what happened. But I need it now before Ricky and Tino get there first. Look, I didn't want to go over there, and it was not my idea. Over to Teresa's. Yeah, they're all up in my face screaming, did you open your mouth to Teresa? And I'm like, I don't know, maybe. I said it just so that I could breathe for a second. Open your mouth about what? About Tino keeping money in his closet. You usually kept only a couple grand, but there was 50 last night. A half of that was Ricky's money that Tino was supposed to give him later. But when I found out that Ricky's money was stolen too, I knew I'd really screwed up. Because Ricky's... <laughs> it's crazy. So you told them... You may have mentioned it to Teresa. Just to get him out of my face. And you called her on your cell phone to make sure she was home. They made me call her. So you went over there. I did not want this to happen. I swear to God. But Teresa gets all up in Vicky's face screaming at him to get out. And swearing at him. And I'm telling her to calm down. And then Vicky just... He killed all four girls? Teresa, Irma, and Lorena. And then he puts the gun to Tino's head and tells him that he got to shoot Dina so that Tino be in on it too. And then they walk back in the bedroom and I guess that's what Tino did because the look on his face. And then Ricky puts the gun to my head and Tino's begging him not to. And I'm on my knees and I see Teresa on the floor. And you know what? 
I didn't care if he pulled the trigger. I wish he did. Can't yeah, you can. This guy's a killer, man, like Julian. You're gonna do this. You're gonna pick up that phone and you're gonna keep it simple like we rehearsed. Or you're gonna go up for murder. Okay, I'll keep it simple. Right. There's no answer to I hang... Yo, Max! It's Julian! What's up, man? Yeah, nothing. I'm just checking in. Uh, listen, you know, I thought I'd put it out there to you. I came into some wicked schnee, if you know what I mean. So I put it out there to you and... Okay. Cool. How much? Okay. Oh, yeah, sure, I'll be there. So then, uh, how are things other... Tomorrow, I tell feathers when I open at 10. See, one easy step at a time. We're just right behind you. That's all it is. Okay, so... What? That, then I just... I walk in there tomorrow and... What? We'll work that all out. What we're gonna do now is put you up in a hotel and get set up here in the morning. I wonder where I get my deal. Don't ask that question again, I swear to God. All right, who's going in with me when I go see Max? You'll go by yourself. We'll be set up right outside. No! No way! Forget it! I want somebody in there with a gun who's watching my back! I right, we'll get you somebody now. Come on. I wanna call my girlfriend. Later, let's go. I wanna call her now, okay? Come on. I'll put my life on the line here! I don't know what's gonna happen to me! I wanna talk to her! I wanna have her kiss my children for me! All right, call your girlfriend, but you don't mention anything about what you're doing, and chill out! Why are you saying she didn't know they'd kill anybody? Why'd she give up her friend? She was scared. Because she thought they'd hurt her. I guess. If she thought they were going to hurt her, then she knew they were likely to hurt Teresa. Yeah. Okay. Um, I see where you're going. That's fine, because I'm, I'm not invested in this girl either way. She's a principal murder one. But use that to get her to testify against the others, because, well, we want them more. Right? Yeah. How's Andy taking it? I don't know. Thanks for coming. Sure. You got to talk to this idiot. You won't do this if he gets the witness program. That's federal. I know, but you just walk in there and show him your ID, stroke him. He won't shut up. Coffee room? He's in there with Greg and Bob. I'm going to strangle him. He acting up? He's just, uh... We should meet here at 7 instead of 8. We got to coach him more. He's too shaky. Well, we coach him the more confused he gets. Let's just go with what we got. Lieutenant, you asked for me? Yeah, we need you tomorrow. You got it. Now, we need you to back up a witness who's going to be wearing a wire, okay? You'll pose as his friend, keep an eye on him, but you won't have to be part of the conversation. You have any problems with what I just laid out? None. Okay, we'll meet here tomorrow at 8 a.m. You got this. Yeah, take a look. Okay, well, I'll be here. Right. Sorry to hear about your guy. Thanks. Soda with lime? Yeah. How's it going? Yeah. All right. Getting cool out there, huh? Yep. First I've seen you in here by yourself. Yeah. I missed all those riveting conversations I had with bartenders. Here he goes again. He'll be here all week, ladies and gentlemen. Mike Dwyer got sober. Did he? Yeah. Can't even come by to say hi. So these two walk into a hardware store. Tell you what, uh, yeah, just pour me a shot of whiskey there so I can smell it. You sure about this, Andy? What is this, a church? You sell booze here or not? Yeah, we sell booze. Then pour it and go breathe down somebody else's neck. without having to worry about you drinking. 
Yeah, well, I got a couple things in my mind, too. What else can you do right now? Other than drink. I'm thinking. You can drink if you want. No. Why don't you go home? Then come home with me. Don't drink tonight. 